John. Hi, Eric. How are you doing? <clears throat> Good. I'm going to step away for just a second. Hi, John. Hi, John. Hi, Hi Joyce. How are you doing? Good. Hi, Eric. Hey, John, while we have a minute, um, I've been going over the ECB webpage, and I've got some other additions to um, the resource resources topic uh, you know like the finger lakes land trust and and prism and you know just those kinds of things i'll send i'll send you the list though okay, um, yeah. now what i need to know is though would you like me to send along their address and their um uh you know their uh website address oh, yeah. whatever should be posted yeah you want you want me to send those along for you because I know that you did the other ones on, you know, okay, I'll do that. And then, yeah, there's a couple of other additions that I, I, I just think we need to just change up. And because what I'm going to do is um, the article for the August newsletter is going to highlight our web page. Okay. So uh, we're going to do a, one of our old articles that we did way in the very beginning regarding pollinators. We're just going to reprint that. And then there'll be a paragraph or two leading um, the readers to our web page and its new design and, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. So there's a little bit of work left to do, but, you know, it's just cut and paste kind of stuff. It's not really anything big and, and I'll just supply the information, but we've got, we've got a while, we've got a, a week or so before it, all that you know no, no one's going to be seeing it anyway until august is what i'm saying so we have a few weeks yes, no problem. okay thanks <laughs> we have two town candidate was on somebody's there <laughs> yeah i know eric was on We'll see who comes. Yeah. Have you been walking, John? In the morning, yeah, it's Saturday and Sunday, but early in the morning before. It yeah, <laughs> me too. Yeah. I'm going to try it after this meeting because it's cool today. Usually yeah. I'm out there by 830 and walking, but uh, yeah, God, not when it's not when it's 80, 90 degrees. That kills me. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got today? Oh, we got we got five today. Really? That many? Oh yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Site plans, one, two, three, four, yeah. Uh, how's everybody's weekend it was good oh i enjoyed the rain i didn't have to water the garden oh my gosh or my flowers or anything it was wonderful yeah we got almost was... three and a half inches here where i am anyway oh. did it just rain on saturday yeah saturday night yeah somebody had said that they got some rain down on like vine valley I think it was either Friday maybe or sometime earlier in the week. Sometimes it's yes. just so spotty. I know that's, yeah, that's true. That's why uh, I know that the storm that they got on the other side on in Gorham passed us by because that was like Thursday or Friday because we were hoping it would water the garden so we wouldn't have to do it. But uh, yeah. But we got some Saturday night, so that was a good thing. Makes weeding a whole lot easier. And that's what I did on Sunday was for a little while anyway. <sighs> Eric, who is the town of Canandaigua guest? Um, gentlemen for uh, Middle Cheshire Road, let's see, 22049. Okay. It, it, uh, John Salisbury. He's not in the office right now, but he asked if he could essentially. He wanted to join the PRC meeting, um, mm -hmm. and so we just set up a conference room for him. So he can okay. Go in there. Hi, Lance. Hi, Chuck. Hi, Lance. Good morning. Oh, good morning. You are there. I am. I, thought I saw an agenda, but I didn't see any faces. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Morning, Lance. Morning. Hi, Lance. John? Hey, Chuck. So John, we'll try to keep it under four hours this morning. <laughs> Golly. It keeps the cost down. <laughs> keep the budget nice, down for nice, nice job on the minutes though. Wow. No, thank you. Oh. I don't you... know what I ever would have done at the ECB without John, quite frankly. It's it's so it he makes it easy and uh, he's just a such an asset. <laughs> You know. Uh, I'll be back in just one second. Uh, that gentleman, John Salisbury, is joining us for the application on uh, Middle Cheshire Road 22049. He's right up at 9, 9 a.m.
So anyways, John's here with us. Uh, I'm going to go back to my office and that's where I control this whole thing. Oh, okay. Sure. And, uh, they you can hear me and see me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, they can't see you, but oh. feel free to take your mask off once you're in here by yourself. <laughs> can you guys hear us? Yes. I can. Okay, thanks. Yeah, fine. Yeah, we can hear. It sounds like you're talking down a hallway, but we can hear you. Yeah, we got the mask on right now. <laughs> it's also a pretty bare room. <laughs> Echo. Um, I'm John Salisbury. I'm the uh, the applicant. My wife and I are the applicant on this uh, project at 4487 Middle Cheshire Road. All right. Sorry about that, guys. I'm back in my office and able to control the screen now. So, yeah, as you said, we're going to start with uh, the one on Middle Cheshire Road. Let's see. Okay, let me find. Here is the site plan up on screen. Um, so this is a little bit north of Wells Curtis Road. If you recall, there's a lot of those flag lots hanging up there. That's this parcel right here is the one that we're talking about right now. Okay, there was a recent, not recent, but the last couple of years development on, uh, on another yeah. one, right? This this was just built out. Ah, yes, uh, that's right. So, uh, John, maybe you can, I guess, kind of walk us through what's going on. Tell us about your project. Oh, uh, sure. Um, my wife and I are very excited about this uh, this project. We've actually been looking for land for over a, over a year. I did finally find this uh, this parcel, and it was uh, it, it meets our needs. It's uh, a nice size acreage. Properties around it are nice size as well, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, moving to Canandaigua. We currently live in Brighton, and we're trying to get away from uh, the noise of uh, suburban suburban urban uh, areas with. Kids growing up and uh, screaming kids, uh, barking dogs, and all that kind of stuff. Um, the project is a is a single story uh, ranch with a uh, two car garage. There is a deed restriction on the, this parcel as well as the other three around it. That, that the property has to be five acres. This is 5.002, and uh, it has to have a two car garage. Uh, we're planning a ranch with a uh, great room in the front, which is the projection you see on the front of the building. And we're planning on having a walkout basement. I've always wanted to have one of those. This lot is ideally suited for that. Um, ma main purpose would uh, you know, just be for different viewing pleasures in the basement and uh, in case uh, someone has to you know, crash there. <laughs> uh, the topography on the site is, uh, drains to the west, and uh, as you can see on the screen, it, it's very flat in the wooded area, which is about uh, three and a half acres of woods. We're planning on removing some of the, the tree line there uh, along a hedgerow that is there uh, to be able to get uh, the property as far to the east as possible. One of the things that does not show on the site plan is that across the street from us, in the other lots down towards Canandaigua Lake, there's actually a deed restriction, a site line restriction, so that we have view from our property of Canandaigua Lake. It makes it a very, very unique uh, property. You, you can actually see on an on a overview where the uh, uh, property across the street and the one just, uh, just south of it has that triangle in there. Well, that triangle is the, basically the site line to the property we want to purchase, and it restricts any uh, shrubbery or fences or buildings within that area. Uh, it, it, it's very interesting. Um, we've, uh, we've looked at uh, all the, you know, <laughs> site geometrics, and the, uh, the one thing we wanted to have was a pond. Uh, we currently have a little pond at our property in uh, in Brighton, 
So we're going to have a little frog pond, as, as <laughs> our engineer called it, out in front of the building. Uh, we're, it's only going to be about uh, oh, 10 feet by 25 feet, about two feet deep. It's going to be lined with a uh, with a uh, rubber liner. Uh, we are concerned about the environment, so we're we're planning on actually the um, roof gutters to uh, drain into the pond uh, to replenish it as possible. On the back, we're probably going to have, uh, if permitted. Uh, a couple of uh, rain barrels to be able to pick up uh, rainwater as we, as we can. Uh, summer like this, it's very useful to have another source of water other than municipal water. This site does have access to municipal water to the very north of the property and actually one property north of us uh, is the water line. Uh, it's 257 feet from uh, our property. Our property goes up to the north to right where the uh, cursor is, and uh, we have uh, access to the water line there, as a, which actually surprised me. So we're going to have to run a very, very long water service, and we're going to have to run a very, very long uh, uh, electric service. Uh, we've been, been in contact with our GE. Uh, our GE is going to require us to put in another transformer. Uh, from primary power to secondary power, right about where our, our property takes a jog, not too far from where, right where the cursor is there. Um, we've done the perk test on the property, and uh, it is suitable for what's called a shallow trench design on the septic. Uh, Bill Grove has, has designed these before, and uh, what it requires is for us to bring in about a foot and a half or two feet of of soil and then cap it with with top, good topsoil and to restrict any uh, shrubbery from growing up in that area. It has to be kept short. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, mowed grass short, but it, it needs to be short and, and cleared out uh, uh, with a blue shock occasionally, I'm sure. Uh, my wife wants to plant a lot of uh, wildflowers out here, which is one of the reasons we, we like this site so much. Got uh, good drainage, and it's, uh, I think it's an exciting project, actually. <laughs> have you had a time, uh, chance to review the uh, application at all, and do you have any questions on the application? You had said something about a deed restriction, and uh, you, I believe you mentioned that the uh, deed restriction required you to have a two-car garage. What what else is in that deed restriction? Uh, we can't have any livestock. Uh, we can't have a dog kennel. Um, the four properties that uh, were involved, well, actually there were five actually, uh, <clears throat> owned by Mr. Cleveland originally, and he set all of this up back in the uh, mid '80s. And uh, there's a variety of restrictions regarding access. What we do have. All of us have rights to the driveway and the 66-foot right-of-way that goes from Middle Cheshire Road past uh, the property we're looking at and further to the east where there are two properties that are absolutely gorgeous looking, overlooking Canandaigua Lake. Uh, they also have the, just about the exact same acreage that, uh, that we have. Uh, just over five acres. That, that's one of the reasons why uh, at least my property, the property we wish to purchase, has such a flag lot design uh, <laughs> to be able to get the exact uh, 5.002 acreage. Other deed restrictions, uh, um, a, a ranch house has to be a minimum of 1,800 square feet. A two-story house has to have a minimum of uh, uh, 1,100 feet, square feet on the first floor, um, split level, and a, I'm sorry, raised ranch have to have, again, 1,800 square feet. So, uh, the square footage is, 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 is fairly high. Uh, not really, though. We, we have a house in Brighton that has 1,600, so this is going to be a little bit bigger for us. Uh, other restrictions? 
it's mainly the kennels and the uh, the access right. Do you have a copy of those deed restrictions? Now, the town doesn't enforce private uh, legal arrangements like that, but I believe the checklist, the site plan checklist requests or requires that we have a copy of deed restrictions. Okay, I can uh, I can certainly send that to you electronically. Uh, okay. I know exactly what the pages are out of the 45 pages of uh, research that uh, the abstract company did. We, we already see the abstract, uh, and we have had survey done, boundary survey, as well as topographic survey. And then but you I mentioned too. You mentioned too that there's like uh, the view shed easements, and I know like this one I think has one there. This lot has one right. there. Um, are there any on your parcel? And uh, I believe they should probably be delineated. If there is, uh, there are none on our property. Okay. Uh, the property we're intending to purchase, there is there is one on the property directly across the street, and then also the next property uh, south of it. I can certainly send you uh, a copy. Well, it's actually one of your maps on file, uh, uh, but I'll, I'll provide the reference to that. It's a TIF map. Uh, and I will send you a copy of the deed restrictions. Okay. And also, John, the uh, any uh, verbiage having to do with the common access easement, uh, there's probably it's probably recorded somewhere. If you have the verbiage as to the page and book number of the recording, uh, boy, it just gets so complicated out there when you've got a driveway sometimes serving three or four lots. Just to make sure everybody right. is aware of, the, of their rights and their restrictions. Yeah, we had to sign off on the restrictive covenants uh, when we were going through the purchasing process. It was a condition of our purchase. Uh, all of the properties have access to that 66 foot right of way. But within that right of way is a paved driveway, and the four owners are supposed to meet once a year to discuss what maintenance needs to be done on that driveway. Apparently that has not and, happened in the past. And how's that go? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you know, um, You get to know your neighbors. Well, except the, one of the properties just north of us, I don't think you really want the house there. Because <laughs> he's got an unrestricted view now, but uh, I have assured him that I'm not going to build anything within his Light line. Okay. He's got a two-story house, and I, I told him, ah, you know, that's where, that, that's going to be fine because our septic system is right in that area. And he may actually have a better view from his second story than I, than we yeah. will. Uh, other restrictions, uh, you know, we've all had to sign off on that, and apparently we're going to meet once a month to, or once a year well, to decide. Okay. We don't have to go through them all. We don't have to go through them all now, John. But just be prepared, at least at the planning board meeting, to uh, discuss those and go over them. Because I'm, I'm sure I won't be oh, the only one right. asking the question. Uh, you, you'd right. also mentioned you may have to take some trees down, uh, but in looking at the detail plan, it looks like your limit of work or your limit of construction is right at the tree line. Are you going into the woods or not? There's an existing well, line. Uh, on the oh, okay. Right. What's that? I didn't hear that, Eric. I'm sorry? So you can see the existing tree line kind of right here. My cursor runs down. You want to drill so in a little... I show a small cutback there. How many trees are we talking? I'm sorry? How many trees are we talking? Uh, I have a count that's probably about 100. I could uh, come up with the square footage by the time of the meeting. Uh, I do have photographs of, of, of the trees, and most of them are between the diameter of, uh, well, three inches and uh, uh, 12 inches. There are some old oak trees on that, uh, on that old hedgerow line, and there's a bunch of boulders in there, too, which we actually want for landscaping purposes. The couple of oak trees that are along that line one of them um, is in very, very poor condition. It's, it's got like five stems coming out of the ground. And uh, 
leaves and debris has been accumulating in there, and the, and the wood isn't uh, it isn't really good. So uh, we're trying to get the the house as far to the east as possible, right to the hedgerow, because that's where uh, the sight line restriction comes in. Okay. Okay. Um. Um, uh, Eric, are there any other natural resources on the lot? I, I'm kind of concerned. Where is the the ridge line uh, given lake views and things oh, like that? Where is that coming in? The the ridge line is uh, far to the east. Uh, if you, yeah, if you look on the contour maps, there's uh, a 110 and it goes up to uh, 114. I think it is right in the middle there. Um, it also has a lower area for, uh, you know, proposing the garage area. Um, so the ridge line is basically, oh, you can see the dotted blue line. There's the ridge line. Okay, just wondering if we were out of it, that's all, or how close we were to oh, it. Uh, part of the drain towards the west. The woods is uh, very, very flat, quite honestly. We have about 10 minutes left, with John, before we uh, move on to oh, the next sure. step. Do you guys have other questions? All right, this is Lynn. Yeah, I have, a, I have a couple real quick, if I may. <clears throat> One is, do we know the location of the water service to the property right across the street from you? Uh, yes, I've, uh, I've talked to the highway, highway and water superintendent, and uh, we discussed uh, where it was. I actually had a stakeout done uh, in accordance with uh, uh, 811 because I, I intended to do some exploratory digging to find out where it is, which uh, I'm going to have to do by hand because there's the 10 foot utility easement for both RGE as well as Rochester Telephone, now Frontier. Right. Um, that's the water line. And my neighbor to the south, he has, a, he has an electric service that goes. To his property and also a water service. So uh, I'm not going to be able to do real excavation with a backhoe until we, of course, locate all those facilities by hand. But it is just uh, 10 feet off my okay. property line. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I think that at least from where I'm standing, I just want to make sure we're not impacting his existing service with any of the improvements no. that you're proposing. Right. Um, the um, second. The second, yep, the second question I have is in accordance with the town's site design criteria manual, uh, any disturbance greater than 20,000 square feet, they're required to do water quality measures on the site up to a two year storm event. Uh, typically what we've been seeing is rain gardens and stuff of that nature. I'm not saying that's the only mechanism approved. Maybe the pond offers some, but where you're putting a liner in it doesn't have an infiltration, but you're still preventing runoff from occurring. So I guess when I'm, what I'm trying to ask is two things. One, if you are going to do that, then provide some documentation back to the town on how we're complying with that statement under their site design criteria. And if you're not going to do it, use that as that mechanism, then additional water quality measures would be required to be provided to be compliant with their site design criteria. Okay, uh, I'm going to have to get a have to make sure my engineer gets a copy of that manual, and uh, sure. certainly. I'm sorry, I, I can uh, send an email to Bill Grove after this meeting containing that language. It's pretty simple. Oh, that would be very perfect. Sure? Uh, if we have to have a, uh, a detention basin of some sort, uh, I'm not a opposed to that and you know in fact you know a lower area that uh, provides even better area for the frogs uh, you know would be, to me would be a benefit I, I would like it very much even if it's all cattails <laughs> um and then i'm sorry eric the only the last thing i just wanted to state it was that um any and all easements i know we say we're showing the right away and this may have been mentioned earlier and i apologize some of it was getting cut off on my end but where we're showing the easement the right away that if we if there's a filing number then that should be shown on the plans um just so that we can go back and look at where that recording was 
Uh, certainly. I have, uh, I have looked at that document, so I know it's available, and uh, we will provide that. Thank you. Um, as far as what I can see so far that we need, we do need a new structure permit application. And John, I know you're in the office. Michelle can provide that to you, or you can get it um, online. Um, for referrals, have it going to Ted, or excuse me, Tyler Oley, the watershed, Chris Jensen, since this is just a single family residential outside of the RLD, the Ag Advisory Committee, Jim Fletcher, uh, and Jim Russell with the Cheshire Fire Department. And Eric, would you please send it to the ECB? I think we'll review it just for information purposes about what's happening in the area, especially since we have 100 trees coming down. Um, that's, you know, I think we need to know that as far as water quality and all that kind of stuff that they provide now. Um, let's see. I'll go through the site plan checklist and send it out after the meeting. It uh, looks like I've kind of already done this one anyways. Um, Seeker. The big, the one thing, um, let's remove this pool from the plans if it's not to be permitted as part of this. Um, if you're not ready to apply for that permit, just remove it. If you are asking for that approval as part of this, feel free to add it. It can be handled as a simple permit after the fact. And that's not an issue, but you know, if you're not proposing it right now, just take it off the plans. Um, otherwise, pretty much everything was on the plans, but again, I'll send that out uh, after the meeting. Plans is a seeker type two? Type two, residential, correct. Thanks. Okay, one of the things I had on my list was the uh, Actually, the tip that uh, that was shown up there, which showed the uh, slate line. I have to show the uh, slate line restriction. Provide that uh, documentation. Also, documentation on the uh, restricted covenants that are on the property. Yep. And John mm -hmm. will send you, or will send out uh, minutes from this meeting that has those different requests on it. It'll probably come out either late today or tomorrow morning. Oh, okay. That's easier for me. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Do you guys have any other questions before we let John go? I'm good. I'm good. Same here. Great. So if you'll excuse me for just one second. I have filled out the uh, permit application for the structure, but uh, we are undecided at this time who our builder will be because we're in negotiations. And uh, my wife keeps changing the, the layout. <laughs> that, that's no problem. That's fine. I, I, had, I had hoped to be able to provide you. Well, I actually have an elevation, but it's just a, an outline mm. of the structure. You put the windows on. Don't forget to give her a big sewing room, John. <laughs> uh, it's one of the reasons why this is going to be a four-bedroom house is that my wife is uh, actually an artist. Um, she taught uh, art in the Greece Central School District for 35 years, and she's looking forward to having a, a, a room such as that that has north exposure so she has perfect light. She will. That's great. Look forward to seeing you at the actual meeting. Okay, uh, this is going, uh, John, did you put on the agenda for what, August? I think it's August 28th. Is that the date oh, of the meeting? August 28th, yeah, okay. I you guys feel like we can handle this at the first meeting, being single family residential, usually we, we do do that. Uh, we probably can since there's no ZBA considerations. Okay. Just for the record, the two dates are August 11th or August 25th, I believe. Okay. I know I have them in my package or somewhere. <laughs> and it'll be included on the minute. Let's, sh let's shoot, uh, everybody shoot for the 11th then. Great. Um, very, very good. I appreciate all your time. And uh, if you come up with any other questions, 
Uh, feel free to uh, pass them along to the staff so they can forward them to me. Yep. Very good. Uh, if you're dropping anything off, just drop it to Michelle. I'm going to go back to my office. Okay. Thank you very much, Ken. Good luck. Have a good day. You too. That is one crazy subdivision. Yeah. Yes. Oh. I, I have researched this uh, all the way back, and there, there's some some really weird easements on adjoin, adjoining properties as well. That uh, yeah, we, we try <laughs> we try to avoid weird. Yeah. Oh man, there, there's one that has wine distance has been varying for actually it's an easement best of this property, but I was looking for the water line easement. Yeah. Uh, this property zigs and zags has 20 foot line distance and bearings, at least 20 of them. So uh, I'm glad it's not on my property. <laughs> good, good. <clears throat> what do we have next, Lance? We have the uh, Light Hill uh, Comfort oh, yeah. Care Hospice. Um, so, and they are in our Zoom waiting room. So. Bring them on. You don't mind, I'm just going to hang this up so we can. Oh, yeah. We have a Zoom waiting room? <laughs> oh, we got all kinds of stuff, don't we? Wow. We're okay. professionals. I'm at glad, this. I showed up, glad I showed up today. <laughs> now I know Zoom has a waiting room. <laughs> Surprised my doctor doesn't put me there. <laughs> do you do telemedical stuff? Yeah, yeah, oh, really? it's, uh, it works out pretty well. And my daughter uses it probably for half her patients. And it's, really? Uh, it's I'm well. so surprised. Is this yeah. just because of the of the COVID? Uh, or uh, yeah. has this was happening before? Well, no, it started up, it accelerated with COVID. Okay. And uh, it's become more of the norm now than uh, the exception. Wow. See how things are changing. Well, for simple stuff. I mean, the other thing is, if you have, obviously the person has to be a video. And Cindy said she can get a good video of the patient, see what he or she <laughs> looks like, uh, rather than having a mask on where it's tough to oh, discern right. what their visual or their facial condition may be. So yeah. she says uh, it works out well. That's a little tough to give shots and do that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, through the wires. Through the wires. Kevin, you yep. with us? Yes. Yep. Great. Okay. So, um, Thanks, with this application, Kevin's going to be Kevin O'Vaney. Obviously, you know, all know Kevin. He's going to be helping out the applicants. Hi, Kevin. Yes. Yep. Hey, there's. How you doing? Uh, Sorry, I don't have a uh, the camera. The desk. I got to get a buy a camera for the desktop. I left the laptop at home, so. I'm incognito today, so I apologize. <laughs> well, we can hear to... you. That's that's what's important. You didn't have to shave. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, you didn't either. Uh, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what's going on, Kevin. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if Sue Underhill's joining as well, or um, so Sue Underhill runs Light Hill and a uh, great location my dad it was there and so it's got a um, special place in my heart and i knew rich russell had reached out to me regarding that they're looking to do expand the uh, the parking lot here uh, for overflow parking when they have a, kind of bigger events trainings that kind of stuff and or you know folks just need more parking there um so they identified the location kind of at the kind of more in the beginning of the drive that goes up it's kind of the flattest of this this area, and um, you know what they looked at was uh, um, kind of 90 by 18. They were working with Mark Parada from uh, his paving company, and I basically put a sketch drawing together as to what that would look like, scaled out uh, using uh, GIS, and kind of looked at the the topo, the existing topo, which is 2006 vintage, the, the lidar. And then knowing, you know, there's some, you know, changes that are out there. 
um, with the, the new driveway location and everything else. But looking at it, it fits in when I was on the site, this area kind of fits in nicely, I think, in this area. The one thing we want to make sure of is that we don't see any of this um, impervious area flow start to migrate towards the uh, the neighbors. So we put in kind of my, my idea was let's put in like a subtle six inch high kind of earthen berm that, that can be mowed um, and direct that flow into an infiltration area. And they do have rain gardens on site, so I'm kind of psyched that they would entertain the idea of another rain garden down here, down low. Um, and that would be the approach to take that water and, and bring it into um, that type of area, that increased impervious cover. So um, that was the approach that we would have recommended um, and, you know, that they bring in an engineer to look at. Um, you know, you guys have to decide. I know they've asked for a waiver on this. I'm more than willing to be out there during construction, look at it, um, you know, help with the uh, uh, installation of the rain garden aspect and, uh, and make this work. So it'd be nine spaces, Kevin? If it's 90 That's by 18? There, it's either eight or 10 is what they're looking at. Um, I had suggested not, you know, so they're still kind of playing around with exactly how they want to fit that in. Um, they think, and just personal experience being there, sometimes you go to the top of the driveway. My thought was, well, when you pull in, you can kind of, you know, do like an angled parking. But then Sue reminded me, you know, sometimes you get to the top of the hill, there's no parking up there, so you got to come back down. Uh -huh. So that's, they're just trying to, they're working with Mark on figuring out, is it going to be eight, nine, or ten parking spaces to fit, you know, conform with the, uh, uh, you know, the requirements of town code and, you know, and fit it in there. Yeah, I, I remember when this came before the board, and I, I, I guess we did scratch our head as to the number of spaces required because it was so unique. And uh, I guess I guess we didn't allow for overflow or anything up top because we it didn't just know. doesn't lend itself up there. Yeah. You know, it's it's pretty tight. Um, they park on the grass most of the time, but you know, in the spring oh. or winter months, it's just going to do pretty significant damage um, mm -hmm. in through there on the lawn area. So you know, the nice so th thing is it you'll um, there's enough area on that side of uh, the driveway to then, you know, uh, to be able to put this in. If you go up a little bit higher, the slope just picks up a little bit. The other side of the road, we were, you know, was being looked at there, but it just, um, again, the slope was just a little bit different. Yeah. Um, and they would work <clears throat> the parking lot right into the slope so they're not regrading an entire area. They can just work with that existing driveway slope and have the parking go in. Kevin, have you considered a pervious surface on that area? Maybe like the the gravel. That would be great. Area. I I think there, you know, it's a it is a, a funding and a maintenance issue. I think that's going to be a, um, everything is fundraising for them. Um, I I I think a rain garden in this situation, as I look at it, is going to serve them potentially better. Um, the clay, I mean, then you're you're really digging out. So, you know, for pervious pavement, you're digging that thing down. There is a gas line in that area, a private gas line service that comes through there um, that I highly suggest let's get that thing completely marked out before you go anywhere. Um, you know, let's make sure we know exactly because that'll fine tune where they can put the rain garden, you know, where we would uh -huh. um, do those, those aspects, you know, and you know, and you do the dig safely, well, they're not going to come out until two weeks before you're going to start the project, you know, is the, uh, the normal mode. So I'm like, listen, we got to know exactly where this private service is so it'll kind of fine tune exactly how you're doing it. So with pervious pavement, you got to dig deeper. You got to set a gravel base. You're going to yeah. disturb a lot more area. Um, and it, I think the rain garden, especially since they have them already, will serve, you know, the same purpose. How okay. often will how often would the lot be used? You know, Kevin. Um, they do a lot of training there, so I think that's 
you know, I was there for roughly with my dad, you know, roughly about two weeks. And they had a couple of training events, you know, when we pulled up. And it was, uh, my dad was, you know, in October, so they were able to park on the grass. Yeah. But, you know, winter months and spring months, it's just, it's not going to be. So it's not thing. like so one. You know, in my two weeks, there was probably twice that they would need this parking. So it's more frequent than, say, once a month or something like that. I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they're um, very, you know, they're trying to make sure they do everything, you know, goal-oriented, where it's they're trying to, you know, not be extraneous in their costs going forward on these kind of things. So it seems like it's a definite need. I mean, it certainly has a, a beautiful view from uh, 5 and 20. Uh, you, you'd really not know there's anything uh, other than residential occurring up there. Uh, it's, 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 you know, I think that's, that's an asset. I was just thinking now you put a parking lot down in the front yard as a possibility yeah. of maybe some landscaping on the, uh, on the roadside, on the parish extension street side, uh, some, some trees or something, uh, uh, shrubs that would sort yeah, of I block. Think the rain garden there'll be some, but then, you know, they could look at some, in through there, I, I think it'll blend nicely into the landscape. Um, you know, it's not going to be up off the ground, right? Like a building would be. All right. Um, it'll be on the hill. On the yeah. Slope. yeah. 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 So you probably see parking area. Uh, now I, I'm not. I'm, I'm not looking or suggesting screen the whole thing off. I'm just saying, maybe to soften it on the uh, uh, the east side. Uh, Around the uh, around the stormwater management facility, that might uh, the infiltration. Yeah, area. maybe sort of where the silt fence kind of, you know. Yeah, like when you take the silt fence out. Section. Yep. Yep. Just a suggestion. I think it's, yeah, I think they, could, they would consider that. Yeah. Kevin, this is Lance. How you doing, sir? Hey, Lance. How are you? Not too bad. It's been a while. Um, That's right. Question for you is, is, is 18 feet deep going to be long enough or wide enough for, for some of these vehicles? I know sometimes they, you know, they're a little bit bigger or they're a larger transport and they end up hanging over the, the driveway area. So I, I didn't know if it would make more sense to make the parking lot maybe a little bit deeper just to accommodate that, that concern. Um, when I look at the drainage requirements of the town, you're well under there. 5,000 uh, square feet of additional uh, parking lot right. area requirements. So um, if you had to make it lar larger, I understand there's another side to that and it's money, but um, if you had to make it larger to accommodate that, that might not be a bad idea. Yeah, they were kind of, you know, looking at 18 feet versus 20 feet and, you know, parking's not my gig. So that's, uh, I'll let, you know, the paving company and, you know, Parada does a lot yeah. of these, so. You know, that's, um, if they deem it, they need 20, I, that's fine. But if they were talking, they wanted to keep it 90 by 18 is what they were shooting for. Um, you know, that's maybe fine. They, I, I mean, they like compact cars or, you know, not have these huge trucks down there. Right, right. You might find that, they, that there's just a little bit of overhang in that driveway. That would be my only right. concern. Yes. Yeah, I can, I, I'll definitely Honestly, I don't you. really have much... I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, I'll just bring that definitely to their attention. They, they are talking about that aspect, but they think 18 is what they need. Okay. Is, is that small berm, I mean, we, are we talking just the berm, Kevin, or is this going to have like some kind of landscaping on it? Probably not, correct? No, I mean, literally it'll be less, you know, it's just enough to, you know, take that shooting water that would be coming off the parking area and make sure it's going to make it to the rain garden. You know, we've, we've seen so many occasions where you got this beautiful rain yep. garden at the bottom. Well, that's nice. Well, all the water is bypassing it. So that's, right. you know, what, and again, we're going to have topsoil that'll be scraped off from the parking area that they'll then be able to kind of, you know, right, right there, be able to use that. Yeah. And just kind of subtly, you know, you don't want this steep, they, they got to be able to mow this. So it'll probably be, you know, if it's five or six inches high, maybe it's, two or three feet wide at the most of like a mound, if you will. But again, we're talking less than a foot in height. You know, it's going to be five or six inches. Yeah. 
makes sense to me. So this project needs site plan approval because it relates to the development for a specially permitted use. This project got a special use permit back in 2014, I believe. Um, That's what it was. As for, okay. as for uh, referrals, uh, send it to Jim Fletcher. It's on a highway. Uh, MRB group for any drainage concerns. Although, you know, as it's a sketch plan right now, it might be a little bit limited. Uh, but really, I don't see any need for much more than that. Um, you have a, a waiver? Think, at least from, I'm sorry, guys. The, the only thing I would say is if we can have either a a detail of of the rain guard or the infiltration area, whatever whatever it is they want to do, something that we can say, yep, that that meets the criteria or of whatever they're looking for, some type of a detail. Of that. Yep. You know, maybe it's a DEC spec something. Um, yeah, provided that's, just to I, I can just photocopy that out. Yeah. Yeah. We would follow just something the that we know what we're approving. Yes. Yep. That works. Um, to your question, Chuck, we do have uh, the waiver request for a an engineered plan. Okay. Yep. Uh, Lance is seeker. Um, I think let's classify it as a type two action. I don't think there's anything major here enough that would trigger anything greater than type two. Okay, thanks. I doubt this changes anything with the special use permit as far as like the conditions of approval and what needs to be changed, if anything. But I'll look through the file and see if there's anything there. What is the uh, slope in that area of the front yard? Looks pretty consistent. Uh, do you know, Kevin, off the top of your head? Yeah, it, it's that section where the parking area is going to go is about 5 to 7% slope in that area. Oh, is that all? Okay. Um, you it's get funny. up a little bit just past that parking area. That's where it picks up to more like 10 to a little bit more so okay again, you know, if you pass the elbow there okay correct yeah then all of a sudden you hit that that's, mm -hmm. that's why they, they wanted to the, you know it just it's a longer walk for folks but it's really the only area that would make sense least amount of disturbance fit in you know fitted right in very good all right um, do you guys have any other questions about this one or things that you want to see on it Chuck, the date for the planning board meeting, the first or the second of August? Uh, we um, could do, go ahead, Eric. I don't, I don't say, have, I don't have the agenda for the other, the, the 11th. The applicants I know want to get this taken care of as soon as possible because I guess, I think they can't, they're not allowed to be open right now due to the state rules and regulations or the, the pause act or whatever. Um, so they want, they would like to do this kind of before they start back up. So if we could do it on the 11th, that'd certainly be beneficial to them. And considering we really don't have many referrals for it, I don't see why that would be an issue. Okay. Sure. Yeah, they're looking to try to reopen, I think, in mid-September, somewhere in that range. So they're, they're hoping to kind of fit this in and um, take advantage of kind of the, the lack of traffic there. So is this a single stage site plan approval or is it a uh, amendment to a special use permit or both? It, it's site plan approval. Um, because it's an amendment, okay, to the special use. Well, because it's development related to a specially permitted use, I'm okay. not sure that the special use permit has to be amended. Um, but let me see, I'll check it. Okay, we'll do it on the 11th. So if I'll get you that detail for the rain garden aspect and um, Cons consider some the landscaping. Comfortable. Oh, that's right, the landscaping, yeah. Consider landscaping along there. Yep, I'll definitely 
uh, mention that to them. I, I think they would be interested in that. Um, you know, the question would be, are you looking for more of an evergreen type aspect or are you thinking? That's what, uh, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, just something yeah, okay. year round. Yeah. Okay. So, and then the nice thing is, you know, where that silk fence is, we already have disturbed ground to when they take the silk fence out and then, uh, you know, they can just, in a good time of frame for Plop. putting those in would probably be in that late September, or October time frame in terms of planting for, uh, for evergreen. So it's a good time frame. All right, Kevin, join us. Thanks, Kevin. Yep, absolutely. Good. Yep, appreciate it. Good hearing you. Thanks, yes. Kevin. All right. Yep, and I'll be out here on this one. No worries. We'll make sure it's good. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. See you, Kevin. Got to refill my coffee. Move on to the uh, design works one. Ready for this one? I'm all set. Thank yep. you. Okay, so here is the uh, parcel as it exists today. The improvements that they're going to talk about are right kind of in here. So there's the extent of the single family home garage, and this is looks like a patio parking area right now. Uh, they are proposing to add a story to the garage and then also. Uh, new home space essentially right here, two-story addition, patio areas, and uh, gravel drive out this way. Okay. Uh, drive on So, let's see. They did provide some elevations, it looks like. Pretty massive looking. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty large addition. Yeah. What is a square footage addition? Kind of hard to, for putting a second floor on, it's kind of hard to. Sorry, I'm just trying to look through here. Uh, the footprint is 1,460. Um, so I suppose you can. Just about double that since most of it's two story. North so uh, this is looking from like Wells Curtis Road. Patio area will be right here. How, um, how much does it increase the uh, coverage? And what they is have coverage? a pretty good size lot. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Um, so According to this, which is mm -hmm. check, 8.2 building coverage, 19% uh, okay. lock. So they're still under on those ones. Um, Do we have a they, steep slope anywhere? Anything over 15 or 10 or whatever triggers it? Back in there? Uh, nope. Not really. Okay. Not with the project area either. Oh, it's at the corner of Wifeless. Okay. Gotcha. I'm, I, you were saying Wells Curtis, and I'm thinking, where are they? Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Yeah. It's Wifeless in uh, CR 16. Okay. Yep. All right. That's a big lot. 
And the driveway, current driveway is off 16. So, okay. Come up. How about setbacks? Uh, setback for the driveway or the parking area? Um, they're, Gravel. They're currently, looks like. Um, the dimensions are kind of hard to see. but Sure is. One of the things that uh, we can request anyways is the exist setback for the existing gravel drive and what's proposed. Uh, so this driveway is just up to the property line. Does a gravel drive have to conform with the 10 foot setback? Yeah, uh, um, except when it's in keeping with the pre-existing non-conformity. Uh, okay, but here you're extending it. Uh, uh, Boy, that darn, darn pre-existing non-conforming. Yeah. Really. Um, they are keeping with the setbacks for the building. Yeah, they, uh, okay. Yeah, the, the building setbacks, I was pretty sure they had 15 feet, so it looks like. Mm -hmm. New patio up front. Do they have a landscaping plan? Do they need one? Do they? Um, I see they one. Are, they are on the lake shore. I mean, I, this is pretty much unusable, the space right here, but um, it is on the lake front if the planning board wanted to determine compliance with the shoreline development guidelines. And I believe I open circled that on the uh, checklist. Hey, I, I don't know what the, I'll have to look. I don't know what kind of landscape they have in front of the existing garage facing the lake now. Yeah, the aerial is. photograph shows like three or four decent sized trees on it, but it's hard to tell. Their plans don't really define whether or not any of them are being removed as, the, as part of this. And of course you're at a second story, but you're not gonna obviously uh, block a second story. All right. Well, you have it circled, so as, as long as I know about it, we gotta we gotta look at it. Also, I open circled the spot about contours. I don't see any kind of proposed contours here. Um, I don't know if they're supposed to be swale running right here, or how they're handling yeah. that. So I open circled that to ask for that, along with tree masses, which we just kind of talked about. Um, Shoreline guidelines, cost estimate for surety. Along with a signature for lands. So. The only thing additional that we'll have to, I'm sorry. I keep interrupting you, I apologize. No, it's tough. No, I, 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 think, I think they're under the threshold. I see an area says, um, it doesn't really define how many acres of disturbance they're proposing, but um, if they're over 20,000 square feet, we just need to add that note, John, to the PRC notes that says they have to provide water quality in conformance with the site design criteria chapter. And you have that information, I believe. Is that correct? Yeah, that's, the standard, that's the standard paragraph we have out, out, out pasted in. According yeah, to yeah, that would be. I'm just going to say, according to their soil erosion permit, they're disturbing 5,700 square feet. Mm. Okay. That would put them under. Okay. Uh, okay. This is next to Dr. Rude's house. Okay. Did he uh, mention what the new gravel drive area will be used for? No, I don't think it's in here. Oh, I. Uh, yeah. Sounds like they bought an RV. <laughs> <laughs> Need a place to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, why, why would you need an RV to have a house like this? I, You're on vacation. Uh, 
Lance, is speaker on this? Yeah. Residential type two. Thanks. Lance, uh, excuse me, Eric, go. Uh, where that vehicle's parked back there, is that where the new gravel area is going to be? Partly. I think the uh, building extension kind of runs a little bit through that. Oh, and then okay. they're, they're going to go beyond that. Okay. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm, uh, yeah, it's almost to the bend in the property, the corner. Okay. Um, for referrals, I have it going to the town historian or the history team since it was built in 1873, apparently. I imagine it's been modified quite a bit <laughs> since then. It looks that way. Uh, yeah. So I know it's not a demolition, but just for their information, they can do with it what they will. Uh, got to go into the ECB, being in the RLD. Yep. Uh, let's see, MRB group. Uh, the chief of the Cheshire Fire Department and Kevin Maney. That hey, Eric, I don't, think, I don't think Jim would have any questions on about being that there is an existing water service to this. He may have issues that he's experiencing with them. So I would suggest forwarding it to Jim too, just to make sure he doesn't have any issues. Okay. I'm sorry, did you mention County Public Works since it's on the county road? Right? I did not. Uh, simply because they're not changing that, but we can send it to them for an FYI. That dock and boathouse, is that theirs across the across the road? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I, again, nothing's happening there, so I'm just thinking in terms of uh, shoreline. Yeah, there was a number of variances granted for that, just looking through the, the file. And oh, the other thing, um, they are showing on here that their building height as it exists is 27 feet, and their addition is just under that. Uh, they may have gotten a variance for it in the past. I see in the file there was a public hearing for a ZBA meeting back in 1988, I think. Uh, but I didn't see any decision sheets in the property file. So I asked the town mm. clerk to see what they have. If They may have gotten a variance for it. Um, if not, if there was no variance granted, then um, I will ask them for documentation of how it, you know, exists at 27 feet. Which they're reducing to 20, 26, 26 something? Yeah. Um, we'll have to get yeah. on that as well. It may be that the addition is 26 feet yeah. tall at peak height, but we'll have to figure out how that relates to a change in average finished grade as they kind of pull this around and what the peak height will be. Since they're building it uphill, I'd imagine that it's going to raise the average finished grade so they'd probably be fine but uh, questions remain about the building right? check it out yeah yep. um, and I did go through the checklist already but I'll send that to John so we can include it in minutes. this will be for the second meeting in August Yes, 25th, right? Yep. Especially if it goes ZBA for the height, but to be determined. Yep. If it does need the ZBA variance, it would also need a county planning board. Okay. It might push it to September, too. But anyway, okay, yeah, let's shoot for the 25th for now. Okay. Do you, I, I don't think we've, I know we touched on the shoreline stuff. Do you want a statement from them 
like we normally do, a statement and landscaping. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think so. I definitely, uh, because they are affecting the shoreline vista with the addition of the uh, second floor on the garage. Mm -hmm. um, not that they're going to be able to soften it <laughs> too much, but at least the, I think it opens the door for if they're lacking anywhere else along that frontage, we could, we would have the right to uh, require something. All right, is there anything else on this one that you guys want to discuss? No? Okay. Oh, excuse me. No, no. Move on. Uh, the clock's ticking on Lance and John. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm good. You haven't seen my bill either. <laughs> All right. <The> bait. <laughs> on Knapp Road. Eric, on the, uh, or Eric, on the um, next two applications that you're going to review their uh, subdivision, um, is there anything that would require the ECB to review as far as the, like the, in the Knapp area, or they're just, just, this, this is just simple subdivision, right? Nothing else is occurring there at this time? Yeah, they're only proposing subdivision. Um, I'd imagine you guys might want to see it, at least certainly this one, uh, stream, steep slopes, wooded area. Okay. Got the whole thing, huh? Okay. So, uh, and then the other one is uh, some farmland off of Canada Farmington Townline Road. I don't think there's much there, but. Well, there's the, the uh, Greenway. Isn't it, there's the green, yeah, it goes up that far, yeah. Okay. And you'll notice the colors on this are obnoxious. <laughs> yes. Uh. Mm. So, hang on. Oh. There, oh, sorry, I'm like, Water bottle for testing water. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to drink out of it. Oh, I'm so excited. I've got my water bottle for sample. You must be thrilled. I am thrilled. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I'm back in. That's fine. Uh, we got this existing 50 acre parcel on Knapp Road. Um, just behind Amanda's house. They are subdividing it into three lots. Each one meets the minimum road frontage and acreage requirement in the RR3. Um, there is probably two waivers, as I see, that they would have to request from the planning board. One is the waiver requirement for a conservation subdivision. The this lot has around 42% steep slopes, or the of the land area steep slopes, not the slope themselves. What is the slope? Oh, let's see. Okay. So, uh, steep slopes on it. There's a stream which doesn't show up on their plan that they had to add. Um, and then also there is a requirement 
in town code about like the essentially the depth to width requirement. Mm -hmm. um, Uh, residential lots greater than three acres shall not have lot depths greater than two and a half times the lot width, except does arise, which there is no requirement. So this one hmm. is well beyond that. Uh, as I recall, his uh, intent here is to subdivide for his children. Mm hmm Eric, so what are the two waivers they need from the planning board again, please? A waiver from the requirement to complete a conservation subdivision, to do a conservation subdivision, and a waiver from, um, just put 170, 174, chapter 174, Subsection 19E. Okay, thanks. Yep. Um, that, that's going to be a problem, especially with one board member I know. <laughs> Is he a neighbor? He's a neighbor. <laughs> Whoops. I guess he is. I guess this fellow has two children, so can't can't get. I mean, one lot wouldn't be bad. He, he can probably conform, but gee. Yeah. How, how how wide are they? I can't read the dimension. What's the frontage? Two fifty eight on this one. Yeah. This one up six thirty, and then oh, this well, one is okay. really right at twenty five. Wow. Mm. I mean, that's what the zoning requirements are. Yeah. Hey, hey, Eric, there's no issue with them subdividing and leaving structures on the remaining parcels, right? Like, for example, they have a framed barn, one's a framed cabin, shed. Yeah, um, they're allowed, you're allowed to have accessory structures on a vacant parcel. So um, with this cabin, I, I want to ask for clarification on that as to whether or not it's actually, you know, cabin is it for dwelling or is it just right, right. You know, open air space? I'm guessing it's probably an open air space. We had one on my parents' parcel, just where Amanda lives now. It was just, sure. you know, a log cabin. So, um, so we'll need clarification on that cabin, how it's used, and that it's not a dwelling. This shed is not an issue. Okay. And on lot three, I'm looking at the. Uh topo it looks like it's unusable in the back totally i think between the yeah. creek and the slopes I, I, don't, I don't know where there's are there any woods out there i'm sorry forestry it's pretty much all woods yeah. oh yeah i'm sorry the whole I'm thing. oh it's a shame try even a flag a lot when Um, anyway, okay. Could be a problem. I can see problems developing with this one. Um, so, assuming, well, they're going to go for those waivers. Uh, what still needs to be shown on the subdivision checklist? Um, I'll skip some of the more minute ones. Uh, for the NRI, they, sh they need to show the water courses. There should be a note that says the entire property is wooded or, you know, they normally have like the little squiggly line yep. showing the, the wooded area. That should be shown. Um, they have the steep slopes kind of shown. They should provide uh, an exact kind of acreage amount for that. Mm -hmm. You know, how much of these, of this parcel is considered steep slope. Uh, no wetlands. It should show the building setback lines, the required building setback lines on each parcel, so the setback envelope. All these should be fine. If this is a, an accessory building, the setbacks are fine. 
Uh, let me see the waiver request. And that's pretty much it for the checklist. In, at, at this stage in our review at PRC, is this where we could deem an application incomplete until it supplies all that information? I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, there is. Uh, I mean, I, this I, week. I mean, I disagree that there's a lot of stuff for them to show. That stuff seems pretty simple to get to us. Um, well, the waivers, I mean, uh, we got to see justifications for the waivers and. Yeah, that's fine. We, we normally just request that here at PRC. Yep. Generally, we don't, or I don't like to just deem an application incomplete at PRC. If there's stuff that's missing, we should make that request and allow them the opportunity to get it to us. That's why we have the PRC. If they can't comply with that and get us that information by the deadline this Friday, then we would deem it incomplete. Okay, that, that's the process. That'll work. This Friday? Mm hmm. Speaker on this? Unlisted action. Thanks. For referrals, I've got to go into the ECB, the Ag Advisory Committee, this property across the streets in an Ag District. Uh, the County Planning Board, because it's a subdivision into more than two lots. Um, that's it. Oh, and Jim Fletcher. Is, is the uh, septic system on that lot shown? Or? Yeah, I can't. Right uh, that's what it is? Okay. Oh, I see my old eyes. Okay. <clears throat> Eric, this needs a, a public hearing because it's a subdivision. Correct. And then again, I'll um, send the checklist out after this meeting. Is the current uh, occupant of the house, uh, well, it's not, it's not the applicant, apparently. She lives in Fairport. Uh, I don't know if it's their intent to move out here and then give her children lots or uh, that's strange. Okay. If you want, we can request from the applicant uh, clarification on the purpose of the subdivision. Well, if they don't give it ahead of time, we're going to ask for it at the meeting. I'm sure that'll come up. Might as well get it ahead of time if it can shorten our meeting length. Got it. Thanks. Thanks, John. <clears throat> okay. Is there anything else on this one, guys? Nope. Nope. I don't, Eric, I don't think this is a major issue, and I think it's probably got enough room, but lot three, I think it would be good to at least have the applicant aware that putting a septic system on that site might be difficult. Uh, they're going to have a stream, a pond, two property lines, um, wherever the adjacent parcel septic system is located. Um, it's just, it's possible that what appears to be an 11 acre lot might be down to about a two acre lot when you start eliminating those areas. Um, so I just think it would be good to at least have the applicant aware that lot three might have problems with the septic system. Okay. Got it. There's a non-conforming lot. <laughs> yeah. Missing that. Okay. <clears throat> On to the next. We got. So that stream plot. flows north, and then goes east to the lake. <laughs> so this is the parcel we're talking about. Wow. It's not a parcel, that's a town. <laughs> 60 acres. It's one of the Gerlach farms. Yep. Um, 
there is. So they're cutting off three acres. Okay. Yeah. Which the acreage, the distance or the lot frontage, that's fine. There is an issue with this frame shed, uh, 17.3 feet from the property line. Uh, it's required to be 20 feet. So whether they shift this line slightly or whether they can move that frame shed to 20 feet, um, they'll have to do that to avoid the need for a variance. Um, or knock it down. Do that too? <laughs> I don't know what kind of shape it's in. The, um, I've got this referred to the Ag Advisory Committee. Uh, Jim Fletcher and the town of Farmington. So is this in any uh, NRI areas? Uh, it's not, it's... Uh, it's in the Paddleford Greenway. That, that's what I was thinking of, yep. Um, that's so a larger parcel. I believe there's some, you know, slight slopes there. It looks like there's probably a creek bed or something. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of wetlands, New York State wetlands that crosses in here, although it looks like some of it's been drained over time for farmland. Yeah. Um, floodplains just outside are a little bit in a the floodplain. There's some wet area down here. So there are uh, slight parts that are in the NRI but it is within the extent of the Paddleford Book Greenway in the Ag Protection Area. Okay. Not in a PDR. Uh, so there's there's nothing that would affect being able to cut off three acres. I don't okay. think so. And it's already it's already a house there, so they're just cutting the house off from the farm. Where's the access? Is that driveway all the way from Town Line Road? Yep, Stone Drive right there. Is the there going to be a right of way to that lot then? No, the farm parcel has its own access just further to the west. Oh. Once it clears out. Okay. Uh, Joyce, do you guys want to see this in the ECB? I think we'll let the the egg committee handle this one. That's all I would see there. Um, there is. Uh, I I did the checklist on this one previously, and I'll send that out to everybody. Um, there's a number of things that still have to be shown on this one um, so a lot of it pertains to the fact that they're really only showing this parcel without any information on lot two which is of course part of the parcel that's being subdivided or the parent parcel but what remains so we need the existing property lines with bearings and distances they can usually draw it from a deed um, let's see Existing contours, including the source of the information. I don't see the source on here. Nope. So, with the the NRI features, should be shown where appropriate on that lot too. Um, Eric, with the driveway being less than 10 feet from property line, would they need a variance? Yeah, they might. Same with this shed. Eh, if that shed's an ag shed, they probably wouldn't need that. They might gotcha. be this driveway. Good call. Um, let's see. Just 
a lot of it just relates to a lot to providing a bearing conditions just for that one. Yeah, I agree. A lot too. <laughs> but again, I'll send that checklist out to everybody after the meeting. Anything else on this one? No. No. It's pretty straightforward. So uh, this one uh, requires public hearing, right? Yep. Subdivision, uh, seeker, it's unlisted, unlisted. plants? Okay. Yep, correct. And uh, meeting date, assuming they don't need a variance for the driveway? Let's just put it on the second one for now. 20, 25th? Okay. Yeah. Got that, John? Yeah, all set. Thanks. Okay, guys, I've got to leave. Thanks okay. very much. See you all soon. Good to see you, Joyce. Be, be safe. So, while I have you guys on here, um, planning board meeting Tuesday night. Uh, I forwarded to you guys the resolutions. Um, I don't think there's any issues with what I sent, but if there is, let me know. I'll make whatever revisions I can. Um, the one that I did not provide to you guys was CPN 20-46. That's where they're seeking the waiver. Yeah. Um, I didn't provide anything in that. I figured we'd talk through that at the meeting. Are you guys okay with that? I am. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Eric will have to explain as to what that's all about. It's... it's well, I mean, you can do it at the meeting. We don't have to do it now, but I mean, you'll have to explain it for the to the board. It's kind of similar to what that guy's doing, the Gerlach one. They don't want to survey this huge parcel, so they want a waiver from that requirement. Yeah. Um, we can talk about the remote participation policy just to have a discussion on it. No changes are really necessary just yet because they extended that executive order to allow us to have telephonic meetings. So you didn't add or subtract anything from our current policy? Nope. Oh, okay. When I saw the word revised, I'm looking, okay, there's got to be something in red somewhere, but uh, I didn't see anything. So, okay. So we're just re readopting or go so moving ahead, moving ahead we'll with our current at this meeting um, and then maybe we can adopt any changes at the next meeting or even the first one in August. But right. it's tough to tell because the governor is going to probably keep um, extending this executive order. It's just that he waits till the last minute to do that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's been an issue. It's an issue, it's more of an issue in my opinion for other communities that we're dealing with. It doesn't seem to be impacting you guys as much just in the sense that we've been conducting public hearings where other communities have not and now they've been scheduling them um, assuming that this was going to end and now we have to either continue to move forward with them or end them all together, you know, just continue to, to continue them out. So some of the people haven't been able to conduct them as well as Canandaigua has via teleconference. So it's, it's a little concerning just because with the executive order out there, it, it lends itself the ability for municipalities to say, hey, we're not ready to make a decision and, and extend it out uh, to cover themselves. Some of the communities don't want to do that. They want to take action, which is fine. Problem is, is if there's one person out there who cannot see, act, or comment on the application that's before them, that's going to be a problem. So yep. a lot of these communities are dealing with very controversial solar projects right now, and so they all just 
they're, they're tired of talking about it and they want it to move. And so it lends itself to be an issue possibly coming down the line. But I think Ken Dig was handled it pretty well. I don't believe this, ex this uh, new executive order really impacts you other than it continues to do exactly what we've been doing. Um, but I think you guys have done a good job and I, I commend both Eric and the town uh, on handling it the way you guys have been and being in front of it, to be honest with you. Well, and we're keeping things moving too. I know some towns have just said, that's it. We're not going to review anything during this thing and we can't do it online. Right. And, and they've just, you know, they're dead in the water and uh, boy, imagine what their backlog is going to be when things open up. Oh, exactly. I mean, there's some communities that have tried to allow things to move. I mean, when you have a controversial project and you don't have a good mechanism in hand to handle it and you have a small meeting room, <laughs> You know you yeah. can't accommodate the numbers while doing the spacing. It's just it puts them in a bad situation. Um, the only and unfortunately, I'm sorry. Not, no, no. Finish your thought. No, I think I'm good. I'm good. The only time it's really come up was the last meeting uh, where we were talking about Rocco and his brickyard project, because that's the kind of thing you sort of all got got to be in the same room, you know. Uh, sure. noodling over a plan, uh, looking at a sketch or drawing as to how everything interrelates and that's something you can't do uh, virtually. So other than that, I think it's, it's worked fairly well, uh, except for the last meeting. And that's because we didn't have you, Lance. That's what I'm figuring. It had to be yeah, because of that. All, yeah, <laughs> it's all, we were like lost sheep. <laughs> I, told, I told Greg, I said, Greg, this won't be that bad. I said, I think we got it pretty squared away. You're good to go. And he, within 10 minutes of starting the meeting, said, this is going to be a terrible meeting. <laughs> uh, well, funny cause what, what's that, I John? I had another. I'm sorry. The John, you were going to. The property on Brickyard Road and Thomas Road, uh, there are sold signs on the for sale signs. So they must have uh, reached an agreement with the owner. It says sold on both corners. Well, well, oh, part, gotcha. part of Rocco's empire. Yeah, um, done a couple of them the other day. <laughs> so speaking of that meeting, uh, have you, uh, Eric, have you reached out, or I, I don't think Chris has, to the fire chief regarding his uh, letter of concern on that festival? Um, no, I'll call him today this afternoon. All right, but well, I'm, I'm going to bring it up tomorrow night, so, because I, yep. I know there was some concerns and there were people not in the meeting, and uh, we got to decide how this thing's going to settle out prior to the signing of the plans because there is that condition there and we want to make sure that the chief is at least at least aware and uh, uh, has some sort of good feelings about it. Okay, uh, other than that, uh, see all of, oh, that uh, the data while we're uh, they're asking for a second day extension. Uh, what's their issue? Why they can't bring it to finalization? Hold on one second. I want to That's see David it. and Laura the uh, property at uh, 4385 County Road 16. They're requesting a second 90 day extension on a site plan approval. And I, I didn't see the, the the email train where they requested it. So it's it's likely the town caught it and um inform them i don't know yeah we usually send them out um prior to the meeting saying that we need to during the question. current approval period subcontractors and suppliers either close for business okay so that's their reasoning okay yeah i have All a right. feeling there's going to probably be several of those that come forward over the next couple of months just because there's not there's limitations to what some of these people can do okay as long as it's not the applicant dragging their feet. Right. Makes sense. Okay. Anything else, Eric? Nope. All right. Thank you for getting us all together. Thank you, Eric. See you all tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Thanks, John. See ya. All right, gentlemen. Talk to you later. Good. You, Lance.